This video is sponsored by Brooklyn Bedding, the best RV mattresses out there. We've made it to Charleston, South Carolina, and it's August, it's peak summer, and it's humid as a mofo. Ah, I'm a shrimper. Put a crack on that door, where's your crack a door? Perfection. Do the gorgonzola. Charleston, here we go. Get some oyster. Oyster bar. Double fisting, y'all. The fun never stops. <laughs> We're gonna be outside in nature. Beautiful coloration. Absolutely stunning. It's a bit of a journey strap, honestly. A lot of sweet grass being sold, a lot of people drinking tea. And men sell. The hair is going up. It's only 10 a.m., dude. We screwed. I must say, this neighborhood is unequivocally busted. Well, we finally left Florida. So long, Florida. We're officially back on the road for our second loop around the U.S. And from here on out, we'll be going to places we've never been to before. Instead of looping north, like last year, we'll be cutting west through the center of the United States. Our first stop is Charleston. We're staying at a KOA in Mount Pleasant, just 15 minutes away from downtown Charleston. And after quickly unhitching, we're wasting no time in this epic foodie city. So we're gonna be here for the next few days, trying to get a glimpse into life in the South. And all, all we know is that Charleston is one of the best foodie cities in the country. So we gotta get, you know, that low country Southern cuisine. <laughs> the best eats that we can find. All right, this is our first food stop. It's a place called Leon's. I've heard it's quite popular. Hopefully there's not a wait, but uh, it's an oyster bar. I feel like a lot of these places are gonna be oyster bars, so we might have to sneak a few extra oysters every time, you know? <laughs> just an excuse to try them. Just drop hella dough, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> hey, it's a special occasion. Yeah. First time in South Carolina. Yeah. We gotta do it. <laughs> we got our, our house oysters and then our peel and eat shrimp that supposedly are the best so unfortunately my uh, my frozen gin and tonic has already melted by now but it was delicious yeah. Nathan said he's making me the perfect oyster a little bit of horseradish a little bit of cocktail sauce and a little bit of minion I'm not a huge mignonette <laughs> minions like little yellow minions anyways I'm not a huge oyster fan so Cheerio, let's hope this goes down smooth. Oh my god, not even fishy or like weird or loopy ish at all. <laughs> Round two. Yeah, <laughs> the fun never stops. <laughs> we got some fried chicken. Oh my gosh, hold on, hold on. Oh. <laughs> That's what you're looking for. Okay, chill, bro. All right. And then we got some hush puppies with Ew. some butter. Is there special? Let me see. Here. Honey butter. Honey butter. Not duck butter. Bruh. They got that seasoning and to every nook and cranny and crevice of this chicken blows my mind, okay? Every bite just... Perfection. Amazing. And this honey butter with these... I don't think I've had hush puppies this good in my life. This is one of the best I've ever had. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, 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 
Oi, oi, oi, oi, oi, oi, oi, oi, <laughs> Well, that was a fantastic meal. And uh, it's still hot outside, which means I think we're gonna need another beverage, another cold one. Yeah, buddy. And the, uh, the bartender recommended this awesome brewing company called Westbrook, which is happens to be like five minutes away from RV Park. So we're gonna check that out. I'm assuming it's mostly outdoor seating, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset if there was some AC involved. Dear God, please. <laughs> yeah. It's hot as hell. Westbrook. It's a we, good day. We sweet. Yeah, we sweet. Got to cover that hitch because it's, uh, I feel like an extra yeah, foot. <laughs> we good! In the bush, y'all. All right, we're trying the Rice Krispie Boy. Bottoms up. Totally marshmallow, like 100% marshmallow. What do you think? We're trying stouts now. That's nice, that's easy. I love it. It's just very smooth coffee. Very coffee, very, very coffee. We have grain that's inside our grain room here. All our grain and malt are white tie. Um, oh, this is the white tie. white tie. We actually have, um, oh, so this is our key lime pie goza that we do. Every single one of these yes. is different. Um, I think we actually have a, a batch of Mexican cake right here. Yeah, Mexican cake. Oh, the, the Mexican cake. This is, this is what I'm drinking That's right what now. Drinking. Yeah. Big thanks to Ryan for an impromptu tour of the Westbrook Brewing Company. They've got tons of great rotating beers on tap and even more bottles, cans, and growlers for the road. Really good people. All right, we're headed to Shem Creek for an Airbnb experience. It's called Behind the Scenes of, she of Shem Creek Shrimp. <laughs> Not Shit's Creek Shrimp. I was about to say Shit's Creek. Right now, some local is pawning my earrings for crank. And I heard it's a beautiful area. There's like a boardwalk and everything. Don't know, we're going in kind of blind here, but it's highly rated and it looks fun. And we're gonna be outside in nature. The Shem Creek tour with Captain Brian was hands down our favorite thing we did in Charleston. It was educational, entertaining, and gave us a unique perspective of the area. He first took us around the charming southern neighborhood of Old Village. It was surrounding fortified downtown Peninsula Charleston by not letting reinforcements or otherwise float in. And then along the Shem Creek Boardwalk, where we learned about the history of how this community transitioned from agriculture to shrimping. Shem Creek is also lined with great places to eat and drink with stunning waterfront views. I do want to show you prime examples, and these are really nice, which is great about them. They don't have any discoloration to their body, so that way, if you have yellowish or greenish tinge, chemical preservatives have most likely been added, and that is a dead giveaway for an overseas shrimp. We'll never have that neon strip at the end of their tail. Are they dead? They're dead. Okay. They ain't gonna be flopping around on you. Look at that. That is beautiful coloration. Absolutely stunning. Now, the rusty crabs are actually better to eat. Everybody's like, ooh, it's nasty, it's yellow and stuff. These shed pretty recently, if they're nice and white, all these have. So it goes down in the circle, and when you pull it in, when you know it's hit the bottom, then it automatically cinches together, and will trap everything inside. Very simple device. Nice circle, pancake, right? Full shrimp popping? Oh, uh, yeah. We got a fair amount, these are small guys. See that neon strip the inner tail? Yeah, yeah. You got yourselves a white shrimp right there. Wow. So they're gonna be big by fall. That's briny, yo. You gotta get your pancakes down. Okay, oh, let's open it up. That was not That was a up. croissant, that was, Nathan. That was, right. <laughs> that was a beignet. <laughs> okay. Hey, that, that was it was much better. better than the first one. It was so better. It's opening it up. You're not a shrimper, but it's better. <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able to eat dinner tonight. But. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, a shrimper. This is briny dough. South Carolina shrimp dough. That's where we're gonna find those shrimp, my boy! Ha -ha! Oh, yeah. oh my god. That was terrible. That was like oh, a folded no. crepe. That was like a goddamn quesadilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, in that right hand, remember getting across your body. This left hand. It's just getting, you can start lower. Okay. Just get those weights that direction. Oh, okay. And don't, and don't swing it multiple times. Just start back here and get it out over the just water. Just one fluid motion, let yes. go of my cake. Yeah, and that right hand got to go across your body. Okay. Awesome. Yep, yep. Almost didn't let go of oh, my yeah. teeth. 
Almost to that was much that. better was than any up. of mine. Yeah. So Very you crushed easy. it. Easy. That was opening up. I... The only reason it stretched out at the last second is because of your teeth. And now we're going to transition from shrimping to sleeping. We recently learned that the number one mod that RVers make to their rig is upgrading their mattress. Well, we were late as hell to the game. We did not know that. In the first year of our V-Life, we slept on our stock mattress. It truly is a camp mattress, not much support. We even added a foam layer, did nothing. And then we were introduced to RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. And let me tell you, this mattress is super special for a few reasons. Number one, it is a legit mattress, one that you would find in your home. It's not a camp mattress. It's not something you sleep on a few times a year and forget about. It's something that you want to sleep on. Number two, they have all different sizes and shapes and heights for all different RVs and whatever your preference is. Also firmness level. You can pick if you want something soft or a little bit more firm like we went with. And a couple other great things about this company. They offer a 120 night sleep trial, free shipping. It's made in America. Yeah and a 10 year warranty. So if you're interested in swapping out your old mattress and getting yourself a new one, just like we did, go ahead and check out rvmattress.com slash travel and use our code travel for 20% off. <sighs> Coffee time. You can see it in my eyes. I need that. <laughs> All right, we're making this random stop this morning to see this tree. And it's not just any tree, it's one of the oldest living trees, oak trees, east of the Mississippi River. And it's been nicknamed the real life Whomping Willow. This is wild. Yeah, it's massive. And you know, they say the fairies come out at the night time. <laughs> so I think we gotta come back. Yeah, we overheard this lady telling her granddaughter, so cute. <laughs> fairies come out at night, dude. But it's so funny, there's like rules of like what you can and can't do here. And one of them is like, no yoga on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to go do my downward dog on one of them branches, but. <laughs> I don't know how exactly how old this tree is, but I can see it now. I see the Whomping Willow. I can see a car getting stuck in this tree. Harry, Harry Potter. We got these even bigger beams, like right here. Boom, one. Look how huge that one is, two, yeah. three. To support the structure, because it's just, yeah, I, I definitely need that extra help, you know, because <laughs> these branches would go on for a very long time. Oh yeah, we found out it's 400 years old and it's supposed to live until it's 900. 900? It's very uh, magical, mystical. Dude. I could definitely expect a few elves running around. I've never seen an oak tree like that in my entire life. Highly recommend it, very worth it. Uh, make the drive, check out the Angel Oak Whomping Willow <laughs> Harry Potter style. Blue skies, just had a little drizzle. <laughs> but that's not enough to end the party. <laughs> um, yeah, let's take it. Your destination is on the left. Yes, it is. <laughs> take me on my right. All right, we've made it to the Firefly Distillery, and today they're having a flea market. It did just rain, so it's like super muddy here, but there's a ton of different little pop-up shops, and people are just selling their stuff, and there's different bars around and live music. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's a vibe. So we're on a mission to try the sweet tea vodka. We were told that is the one thing we have to, must, try here. <laughs> Devil fist in y'all. Just kidding, Nathan's mine. So we decided to go with their signature drink. This is their sweet tea vodka mixed with lemonade. And because we don't like too, too sweet, they added a little bit of soda water. It's it amazing. so good. It's delicious. It's like not syrupy, not too sweet. It just, it tastes delicious. And 
The dangerous thing about it, it tastes like there is zero alcohol in it. So you can just keep drinking it. This song? It's an know? easy drink. It's an it's, easy drink. It's just great vibes here. This is their famous handcrafted sweet tea vodka concocted from uh, Louisiana sugar cane. And they mix that with the local tea leaves uh, in the area. And those tea leaves come from the oldest active tea leaf plantation in North America. <laughs> uh, something like that. Well I read done. it off the back. I read it well off the back. <laughs> So here's a little behind the scenes thing, you know, a uh, question that often comes up with Olivia and I when we're doing these kind of things and we're out and about and we're, we're having a few drinks and enjoying ourselves is, who drives, who drives? <laughs> 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 who gonna drive? Because uh, I ain't driving under the influence. So, so we gonna wait it out in the South Carolina heat and humidity until we're under the limit. <laughs> Ooh, and we gotta give you guys a quick little tour of our RV park. We're staying at this cute and quaint KOA right on the water. Only a 15 minute drive to downtown Charleston. Great amenities, it's quiet, and it's got serious camping vibes. Look at that. This is literally a little train cart. Oh, hi buddy. <laughs> Round two, baby! Sullivan's Island! Another day in Charleston, which means another excuse to eat delicious food. You like barbecue? They got it. <laughs> Seafood? Heck yeah. <laughs> Southern treats? treats. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's lunchtime, so we're getting hungry. And we're heading to Sullivan's Island now, which um, is supposedly a beautiful area. We've never been. And there's a restaurant there called The Obstinate Daughter that we are recommended. And so we've been getting all kinds of recommendations here in Charleston. And for once, I feel like we're actually taking them in and doing the things that we were recommended. On this trip, we have we have the time to really go and see them for ourselves. So that's Try what we're it all. Try all the food, Maven. I won't say no. <laughs> Sullivan's Island is a town and two and a half mile long barrier island located right near the entrance of Charleston Harbor. First impressions, it seems to be a very wealthy and affluent area with beachfront mansions, great restaurants, and hard to find parking. Well, we found parking. Very bizarre, it's almost in like somebody's yard. good components to it. Sweet, salty, savory, a little bit spicy. And then you get that little tang from the gorgonzola. Insane. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh my god, Nathan. I think, it's a, I think it's a winner. It's a winner. <laughs> I haven't even taken a bite. It's a winner. Peaches, sausage. Oh, dude. Oh my oh goodness. God. Red onion, balsamic. Don't mind if I do. Is it? <laughs> yes. The sweetness of the peaches goes so well with it. I love these thin crusts. Look at that. So people think the expression goes, if you can't handle the heat, stay out of the kitchen. But uh, I think the original expression was, if you can't handle the heat, stay out of Charleston. <laughs> Night of the day, getting that dehydrated look. <laughs> <laughs> We're out here in Sullivan's Island, or as the locals call it, Sully's Island. I don't 
know if that's what they actually call it, but... Hey, I must say, the waves are nice and mellow, very family friendly, lots of kids in the water. I mean, it's literally mansion after mansion, just these beautiful homes with incredible views. And I love that they all have, like, lawns and grass in front of them. Tons yeah. Of space. It's, it's a nice life. This is a great lifestyle, out here. Yeah. Good food, good weather. Yeah. It's a long summer. Yeah. Um, just get out of here and fly out. It's not, it's not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> It's not even that hot out, it's just the humidity. It like weighs on you. And I think, oh yeah, it's not even that hot out. It's nice, there's even kind of a breeze. And all of a sudden I just feel this little drippity drop coming down, you know, honestly, my breast going down to my belly button feels terrible. All the way I'm down like, to my ball fro. All the way down to my, <laughs> I don't have a ball fro. <laughs> <laughs> you like that <laughs> Yay. Yeah, well we've, we've kept the drinking going after lunch and we're now at this place called Revelry that has a little rooftop, nice and relaxed vibe I must say. Our uh, bartender was from Australia, from Tasmania. But um, it's gonna be a drinking day for sure. We got a, we got a little fun evening planned ahead as well, so we'll see how that goes. So there's a funny thing about drinking beer in really extreme humidity. It doesn't stay cold for very long. Not as enjoyable, but you gotta drink faster, right? So we need a quick snack before the show tonight. I heard about this place, this soul kitchen place called Hannibal's Kitchen. And uh, yeah, we're not gonna order too much, but I heard their, their crab and shrimp rice is unreal. So that's what we're gonna get. Oh my god. Yeah, crab and shrimp. Get your bun out of the way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dang, dude. That's some soul kitchen right there. Hey, Pharrell loves it. It's got to be good. Pharrell loves it. All right, here we go. Want the first bite? No, go ahead. I know you love it. Let's see. Wow. Okay, give me, like, what are the flavors? Oh my god. I don't know what those flavors, I don't even know how to describe those flavors. It's just kind of unknown to me. Take it easy, dude. Don't be eating all the shrimp. Take it easy. Mm. It's just crab and shrimp over rice. Simple and delicious. Hannibal's Kitchen. Not Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> Not Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of. Really? Terrible. For the comedian. <laughs> it's a winner. It's a winning dish. Well, we got about 45 minutes to kill before the show. We decided to stop at this place called Door Bros. And they got some fancy cocktails, you know? They got a nice menu, 4.9 stars with like 300 reviews. It's all, all about the reviews. That's and all uh, we ever do. surprisingly, we're sitting outside, which means, yes, it has cooled down enough to, to enjoy a cocktail outdoors. This might be the most aesthetically pleasing beverage I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> this looks like it belongs in the Shire. Look at this thing. <laughs> Beautiful. It kind of looks like a dessert. Olivia's looks I. <laughs> look at this right here. <laughs> they put pistachios on top. Who puts pistachios on top? <laughs> All right, so I'm a huge old fashioned fan. Like it's my, it's my go to drink. And he said, if you like an old fashioned, go with the, the bourbon and Clyde. It's a slightly sweeter version. And he's spot on because it, it honestly tastes like a more desserty old fashioned, which is exactly what I was in the mood for. So he said it was his favorite drink on the menu. Dude, it's and, such a beautiful, uh, like the details in the glass and also this thick layer of foam or egg white, whatever it is. Yeah, it's like it, it was looks a little delicious. Classy goblet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you got two beers. Oh, I got my natty light and my knife. Wait, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with a few late night scoops. <laughs> All right, Jenny's was a good decision. Man, their ice cream is like top notch. Huh. So good. 
The gooey, what is it? Which one? The gooey one? You got gooey butter cake and peanut butter chocolate chip or something. Salted peanut butter and chocolate flex. Yes, and I got like some bramble cake. What is bramble cake? I don't know, but it's delicious. Bramble, hope I'm saying that right. And they're open till midnight. Whoa! <laughs> Cheerio, Cheerio, fresh waffle cone. <laughs> All right, Nathan. Final thoughts on Charleston. What's your opinion? I mean, honestly, it's a great city, like very well-rounded, really good nightlife, really good restaurants. Um, you have the beach, you got, you, got, you got beautiful homes, beautiful architecture. The one downside I'd say is it's definitely expensive. Like it's a little pricey. And it's only because I think in the last decade or so, it's just become a really hot destination and everyone's moving here from like New York, from even I've heard like Californians are out here coming out here now too so damn Californians we ruin everything <laughs> it's just the yeah it's it's hard to live uh, I think the highest quality of life you can here if you if you're not earning a decent income and um, and obviously the humidity in the probably July and August months are, are not very pleasant so uh, and although we're staying in Mount Pleasant <laughs> I've heard it nicknamed Mount Plastic uh, that area is developing really fast too and there's just like all the you know Trader Joe's, Costco, Walmart, everything's available, it's brand new. So it's expanding. Charleston's I think going to be a city that's going to be growing really fast and uh, happy to come back though. I'll be happy to come back but I'll be expecting to uh, you know bring some cash with me. <laughs> hey and a really big shout out to our Patreon peeps. You guys help keep us on the road and we are so grateful. <laughs> we need water and electric this time around, so we got to dump. Yeah. <sighs> but you know, we did really well. I think we had plenty of space left for... We used the public facility. Yeah, we used, we utilized the public bathrooms a lot, the showers. I must say, they're pretty nice. We hardly did that at all. I don't think I used one of the showers, one of the camp showers our first year at all. Did you? Yeah, I don't think so. No, but... This should, this this year we are, we're using a lot more. Um, but yeah, no, I think we did pretty good. And our black was, we had so much space. So that's always nice. There's always that little bit of like fear that it's gonna fill up. Then you're gonna have to move your freaking rig in the middle of your stay. Oh. It rained. Yeah. Oh God. All right, we'll just end this here. Quick test with gray first. All good. Close it. All right, let it rain. <laughs> let the chocolate flood gates go. <laughs> oh God. All right, that's my cue to leave. Okay, so a new change in our routine. <laughs> it's officially so hot and humid that by the time Nathan is done hitching us up to go, he is literally drenched in sweat like big ass Mickey Mouse, you know, swamp ass, the whole nine yards. So our new thing is we hitch up, we pull out, and then I kind of just pull over at the front of the RV park and Nathan runs inside to quickly shower and be clean for the drive. Um, yeah, it just makes sense that he's not disgusting for like five or six hours and just honestly probably hating life coming in real squeaky <laughs> oh yes is he happy please be happy uh, keys the trailer how you feeling better <laughs> was it good yeah uh-huh well he's probably a little annoyed it's not i don't know at least we have the camp shower though